we had a question that came in earlier about endarterectomy. I can't remember who asked it, but they were asking, they're getting ready to have an endarterectomy actually on Friday. And they want to you know, they want you to go through the process. What can they expect from the procedure? What happens during the procedure? Why does a doctor do it? Mm. So, yeah, that's those are great questions to have, especially going into the actual operation. So the word endarterectomy to me is just a fancy way to say, we're going to open up your blood vessel surgically, physically remove the plaque there, and then close the artery up. Usually, um, with something called bovine pericardium, which allows the artery to be larger than it was before you had the operation. So not only are we physically removing the plaque, but we're also making the artery slightly larger so that this disease process doesn't rapidly recur and cause symptoms again. So to do the operations and the type of operation that we do all over the body, we can do it in your carotid arteries in your neck. We do that to prevent your risk of stroke or to prevent stroke. We can do it in the aorta, although it's not as commonly performed there. But I think another more common location that it's performed is, is the common femoral artery, or the artery in your groin. Um, so in the groin, when we do this, we make an incision, usually an up and down incision, um, and we deepen the, the incision to the level of the artery. We control the artery, meaning we put a vessel loop up high in your external iliac artery, it's the artery in your pelvis. We usually get control of the arteries in your groin, your superficial femoral artery, and your profunda femoris artery. And we do that so that when we clamp the artery or when we open the artery, it no one gets, there's no bleeding. Mm -hmm. So we do that so we can safely open up the artery and safely remove the plaque. Removing the plaque is pretty straightforward. I mean, this is an operation or type of operation that people have done the same way for probably 60 years. Um, and, you know, when something works really well or people do the same thing for 60 years, it means that operation works pretty well. Um, it's a very durable operation. Um, and it's an, it's an operation that we like to do because we don't like to put stents in that location. We don't like to put stents in the groin because they can, they're sort of- Right at your bendy spot. Exactly, right? So bendy spots, metal stents don't always perform the best there. Um, so I think it's a tried and true operation. It's a great operation um, that can provide durable results. I And I still, I mean- I I always like endo first, you know, especially for patients, you know, always try to go in with a wire, but it, it's still, endart is still the gold standard for, for the common femoral yeah. artery. I mean, it, it's the one, it is going to, it's pretty durable. Huh? Yeah. I mean, I mean, people in Europe uh, are actively doing clinical trials to look at endovascular solutions for, for the common femoral artery. And I think it is one of the semi frontiers endovascular still has yet to conquer. Mm. Uh, that being said, you know, some patients aren't the type of patient you want to take to the operating room for a femoral endarterectomy. You know, I've had some pretty incredible results using intravascular with the tripsy of the common yeah. femoral artery. Um, and you know, I, I can't say that I've never put a stent in the common femoral artery as well. You know, there are a lot of unique situations that provide a good opportunity to use endo in the common femoral safely and durably. Yeah, I mean, I, I've seen it. There was one situation where um, there were two different facilities within an hour of each other. And we were at one facility and I watched them use this one laser that used to be on the market and it was, it could cross CTOs without the, the need of a guide wire. And it wow. went right through. It was amazing. The doctor went through this one uh, full 100% occlusion, which is called a chronic total occlusion or CTO. If you ever see that on your page notes, CTO is a 100% occlusion. And this was in the CFA. And it just literally like butter. It went right through. No stent was needed. It, it was just beautiful. Did a plain old balloon afterwards and low atmospheric pressure. And um, the patient walked out. I went to another facility about a week and a half later. And it was a university hospital. And they had a similar presentation of disease. So I'm thinking, oh my gosh, they're trying out this same laser. This is going to be great. Patient's going to walk out that day. Easy breezy. No problem. They pumped in the contrast fluid and then the doctor starts, you know, taking off his stuff. And, and I said, Hey doc, do you mind if I do a quick interview with you? Like, I don't understand because I was doing it as a journalist and following this. I said, I don't understand why I just saw this. And I showed him, he's like, yeah, that's pretty similar. Yeah. You know? And I said, well, why couldn't you do it? And he says, Oh, I mean, I'm sure the laser would have worked. The standard teaching protocols dictated that if you couldn't stent a particular artery, you couldn't treat it. 
And so they sent the patient for a vascular evaluation for amputation and she had her leg amputated. Oh my gosh. And this patient didn't know that literally just an hour, hour and a half away, another doctor didn't have that same philosophy, would have just taken that same laser, which he had done before and opened up the vest, which is why I always tell patients, you always need to get a second opinion prior to, to any procedure to understand all options that might be available. Because as we're learning here, even at this conference, there are advances happening at the speed of light in PAD care. There's a lot of interest in especially below the knee vessels. Yeah, I, I think it's 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 sad to hear that somebody with common femoral artery disease ultimately went on to get an amputation. Yeah. Um, because, you know, in my eyes, that's kind of like a never event in a patient with the appropriate risk to undergo surgery. Now, I'm kind of a little old school uh, when it comes to the common femoral artery, but I also have the luxury of being a surgeon, being able to cut down if I do something endo and it uh, some complications happen. And I think one of the complications from an endovascular approach for the common femoral artery is like, if you cause a dissection or a tear in the artery and that tear in the artery prohibits blood flow from getting down to the lower leg, I'm not entirely sure leaving that behind without a stent is going to do any patient any favors. So if you can't put a stent there, um, and you cause a dissection treating it, you probably need to call a surgeon quickly so that the patient doesn't get worse. Yeah. So I, 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 you know, it's, it's, it's an unfortunate story. Um, but you're absolutely right. There are a lot of new options and technologies available to help patients prevent amputation. That's what we all want. And it's funny because it is the CFA. I didn't even think about that. So funny till now that they, I, I could have asked, why didn't you try an endarterectomy? on that patient with the common femoral. That's Yeah, that's so I mean, it's, 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 it's a tragedy. But I mean, you know, you've talked about this before. It's like, there are a lot of patients in the United States of America who get amputations related to peripheral arterial disease and they never are evaluated. No. They don't ever get an ultrasound. They never get an angiogram. Um, and I mean, that's why what you do is so important uh, because you're raising awareness. Because we all we can do is try to mitigate this the badness that these people are facing. Yeah. And I mean, and back to the end, Dr. to me to finish out that discussion with, with that one, we always, if there's a great surgeon, it's, it, it, it's not that big of a recovery for the end dart. I mean, you do need wound care, mm -hmm. um, but it's really not that bad. Can you talk about the recovery process that she can expect yeah. and anything, any complications that might arise that she should, after when she goes home, say, Hey, you know what? Red flag here. I need, I need to go back. Absolutely. So the worst thing about a femoral end me is the location of the incision you have to make, right? We have to make these incisions in the groin. It's an area where we're all a little doughy. Um, it's an area where we sweat. And it's an area where incisions are prone to infection, right? That's by far the worst thing about that operation is the post-operative infectious risk of the incision. And the reason why it's problematic is because, like I said, when we close the artery, we generally put, a prosthetic material to help make that artery bigger. And prosthetic infections are disastrous. Mm -hmm. No longer are we worried about the leg, we begin to get worried about the patient surviving, right? So it's a real concern. So the biggest thing that I tell my patients after this operation is we have to make sure that incision heals perfectly. If there's redness, if there's drainage, don't wait a day, just call my office, right? Because the worst case scenario is we bring you to the hospital, we put you on antibiotics, we may have to clean up the incision. And that's something that can happen one in five times. Um, you know, I'd rather catch it early than wait for a disaster to happen. So incision care, making sure your physician sees you two weeks after the operation, making sure you know that any drainage, any leaking, any bleeding from the incision is a cause for concern. Um, and whenever I do these incisions, I always put a special dressing on called a wound vac or an incisional vac. So it may look like you've got a big incision, but it's a specialty tool that helps facilitate wound healing. And that's been shown to promote wound healing and mitigate the risk of wound breakdown. So that's worth a patient actually asking the doctor. I imagine it's probably a three day stay in the hospital for something like that. Uh, sometimes it depends. I think that three to four days, sometimes two days, right? It depends on how how much discomfort the patient has postoperatively. So I'm not in the interest of like rushing people out, no. but I think a nice average estimation would be three days. And three days. make sure that you, that you ask 
Well, is a wound vac right for me to help with that incision afterwards? If if not every doctor does that, it is worth asking if that's a possibility for you, mm-hmm. right? Yeah, and I think it's, I, I'm not sure if wound vacs are standard of care, but they're a huge, huge component of how I put manage all my surgical incisions because I know they help. And there, the incision is only what three to five inches. D- depends on depends on the level of disease, but yeah, yeah I think a three to five inch. Uh, three to five inch incision is pretty reasonable for that operation. So, you know, not as big, but it, it is more durable sometimes than than the endovascular in those cases. But we still always suggest to a patient, hey, at least go in with a wire and balloon, at least take in IVUS, intravascular ultrasound, get a better idea of morphology of the plaque and what's happening. And, and at that point, decide whether or not a, a, a an endarterectomy might be best for them is, is typically what we suggest. But Honestly, in some of the the places, some of the more rural areas, they don't even have an endovascular specialist. And we just got to go with the vascular surgeon. The vascular surgeon's available today. They're not going to be available for three weeks. We got to get this patient out of pain. You know, I have no problem saying, hey, it's gold standard. Just get her done. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And that's one of the few. Yeah. I would say that it is a safe operation. It's a well-studied operation. It's a great operation, especially considering we don't have the endo answer today. No. 